Bad things happen in darkness. What is unseen is perhaps the most scary. Often I look out into the darkness and wonder what terrors await me. I often wonder during those early days what would happen without the protection of the light and what would happen to the world. It was a fateful day when the world turned dark, when the flock of ravens appeared to distract us from the true horrors that were to come. The day the sun turned dark, blocking our only protective shielding, I remember the day well. People were initially okay until the weight of the consequences sat in. When dark things began to arise and unexplainable phenomena happened, chaos ensued and people pointed to the kings and queens for answers. However, this was only the start. Creatures that only can exist in darkness made their way to the public eye, some with altruistic intentions and others with wicked plans. I am here to tell you the story, the story of the day that the sun was taken from us and the ensuing weeks that followed. A story of heroes and villains that defined history. Please hear the story and hear the events that transpired during these foreboding times. For I have the true story not the lies you may have heard. My name is Christopher Rondo, and welcome to Scald's Tale Eclipse. We pick up still at the time of the eclipse as our heroes are looking down at these standing stones that seem to have opened portals to other worlds, other dimensions, other planes of existence. Something weird happened. Some magical effect. We can call it fate, destiny, but something has brought these people together. And it just seems to be these marks that they have acquired. Two of them appeared to have been blessed by demigods. They have wandered, met people like the Grim Reaper and Dav, who blessed them with this gift. Two of them seem to have been best blessed by the planes themselves, touching the portals to the hells and the heavens seem to have given them this mark. But before we continue on with that story, we look at another. We see this We see this man sitting down and we see a small cot, a simple door, um, a dresser, no furniture, uh, no excessive furniture or paintings on the walls or anything like that. And just just a singular window and we see his earrings, the three on the left, two on the right, the two at his bottom lip, um, one in the nose, and the chain that goes from his bottom lip to his ear. See the tattoo of his, his eye on his forehead and the two on his wrist. And he sits there and he just looks out the window for a brief moment. And uh, he seems to fall over in pain. He quickly rips off his shirt as we begin to see four marks beginning to engrave on his body, two uh, above his, on his chest, and two on his shoulder, as uh, we begin to see these four marks begin to uh, engrave. Is, you notice this for a brief moment. You see the orb begin to light up. We see this man again. We can see him for half a second, maybe as these four marks seem to be becoming tattooed on his body. And that's where we're going to pick up. It's just half a glimpse, and I think Demira is the only person who, who would have recognized it. Clearly the same man as before, though. 
Is this uh, after our rest? No. So we haven't quite hit the rest yet. Um, this is okay. pretty immediate after you guys... Eff effectively, you made your decision, caught your breath for half a second, made the commitment to rest, and then this, uh, this thing happens. Perhaps uh, you are off alone, setting up a bedroll or something. Maybe you know someone is lighting a fire somewhere and you just have a brief moment to, to look at the sword. Uh, I don't think Demira sees any point in sharing this right now. Okay. Um, everyone else besides Demira can you perceive for me. Not starting off great today. The twelve it could be worse. Nice. I've got a uh, five, of course. Compared to Misty's twenty-two, <laughs> has has anyone else noticed that Bork's perceptions are continuously low? Like he, be a trend. Yeah, it's like he's permanently distracted and unaware of his world. I see. He's just like la la la. I mean, he has a new pet, so yeah. True. He's probably sneezing as he scratches the pet. And his eyes are all starting to water. <laughs> okay. Uh, Doc, Doc and Misty can um, see a small figure uh, moving within the tree line. Which side? Great. Uh, top left. Top? Yeah. Left. Great. Uh, Doc would be like, I think we might have more company. More and dogs for me to make friends with? And, uh, for a brief moment, uh, we see the, uh, we can see the leathers of an elven boot, and this kid gets thrown forward. He kind of falls down onto his knees and, and hands and pushes himself up. Uh, Bork and Demir will recognize this as Randy, who wanted candy. Randy, who wanted candy. Oh, 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 uh, he he hello there. There was this, uh, scary, uh, el elf lady who just pushed me forward. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, hello, uh, my, my name, my name is Randy. Um, I'm sorry I followed you. I was just a little kid. It, it's okay. Um, uh, good job with the, uh, the, 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 the dark el elves, the, um, uh, I haven't seen the sun in like a week and a half, so that was that was kind of pretty. Um, uh, I'm gonna be going now. Um, have a good day. Uh, uh, uh you've uh, been following us for some time. No, you have no proof of that. Except that the dark elves were hours ago. Did well, I say dark? I didn't say dark elves. He, I just gonna just gonna move that way. Wait, you said Come something about a scary Randy. elf lady? Oh, don't worry about that. I, I think that's fine. Come here, Randy. What? <laughs> I, I, think I, can, I think I can get home now. It's okay. <laughs> uh, he doesn't say, Bork doesn't say anything more. He just kind of goes, you know, with the one finger, like, Come here. His his like shoulders slump Come forward, here. and uh, he 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 approaches. Where is there a walkway? Go here. Uh, Bork is gonna put his um, his arms his on his hip, and uh, <coughs> this is less of a I'm gonna kill you intimidate, more like a fatherly you're in trouble kind of intimidate. Fourteen. Uh. I, I don't um, think I don't think you need a roll for this kid to be intimidated. Young man, explain yourself right now. Why have you been following us? 
I, I'm so sorry. They, they say that if you want to uh, uh, have stories to tell, you need to go get stories. So I thought I would follow you and try to get a story. And oh, I, I got a story. So I guess we're good now. I guess I can go home. Uh, uh, thank you. I, I feel very reprimanded. I, I feel uh, great. <laughs> uh, so uh, I guess I guess we're good now. It, it was a pleasure. It is nighttime, I think. Traveling now would be dangerous. So... You are going to spend the night with us here, where we can keep oh, you is safe. Oh, is that a goblin dog? Oh, cool, cool. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, goblin dog, goblin dog. Achoo! His name ah, is oh. Fluffy. Yes, this is great. Just... Achoo! Yeah. Ah, ah. Okay, okay. Ah. Oh, so cute. <laughs> is it just <coughs> such a good Fluffy? I love my Fluffy. I, I, as I was saying, you're going to stay the night with us, and we'll... Uh, Part ways in the morning, assuming you can get to the village safely. You must be kidding. The morning, the morning will be equally dark as the night, so this kid has a chance of surviving after we wake up, exactly the same as if we would let him go now. Uh, uh, well, that's a fair point. Well, Randy, I guess you're stuck with us until we get back to the village. Uh, that's oh, not oh, what I meant. That, I meant he can go can, go now. You know, I can like uh, like catalog your whole adventures. I can I can go around just just tell you uh, tell everything you little know. I'm I'm very good at, at music. Yeah, very very good. Well, that sounds good. But again, this is only for now, yes. Randy. Hey, kid. Um, you know. Do you have a death wish? Do, do you? No, but I'm asking you. Although it's pretty does, funny that he asks you. Does, does anyone have a death wish? I don't know, because I think you do, because you are very excited to stay with us, and wherever we are going and whatever is going to happen for us probably ends up in death of all of us, including you, if you go with us. So I would suggest that you fuck off now. Uh, not all of us. Certainly. That's a dirty word. You're not supposed to say that. I agree. You shouldn't say that to a child. And a child What's is not supposed to be here or go anywhere with us. I think you He's here now. Us. We're going to have to keep him safe. It is that simple. Do you have parents? Oh, oh. Yeah, that's a good question. Randy, where's your parents? Are they there? Back at the the Vagabond Krasha. And do they know where you are? M maybe. I didn't ask. That's totally a no. I am going to fold my arms. And, uh... Well then. That's not good. We're gonna have to make this whole trip a little bit faster. No, 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 Bork, what about you take the kid home and we do the rest? You know, Demir, Demir adopt mm. me, and, and you two just go, because parents will go crazy about that kid, you know? And, and we can't take care of the things. I will protect your lady, you know? I don't know. What if you guys get in trouble? Well, no. We have Doc with us. Can you get in trouble with Doc? He's very small. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, Dammy, what do you think? Think we're all meant to go to the lake together? Oh and God. I don't think that th this Randy this child is going to be safe going home alone so i mean i got here fine wait, wait exactly no, i want i want to go yes yes i cannot go home alone i should follow you to the lake and uh yeah and you most certainly did not get here fine alone think about it you were close behind us if you had any trouble we would have heard it and gone to your rescue us and any scary Elves hiding in shadows. It's very, 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 very scary. You're, you're, you're pretty, That's... pretty nice. I don't know. Doc, what do you think? 
Uh, well, um, I suppose the way forward probably would be a bit dangerous, but we have done pretty well so far. Uh, it seems the kid has a bit of spirit for adventure. If we could promise his safety, I don't see why they couldn't come with us. There we go. And besides, Misty, if you are afraid for the child's safety, think about it like this. We bring the child home along with the other missing one, and maybe they'll give us a little extra bonus for keeping this one safe. You could call it a finder's fee if you want. Well, there's no guarantee that that will happen, so... No, there's no guarantee that the sun will come up in the morning either, but, you know, oh wait. No, like, there is a guarantee that sun will not come up in the morning, so... It, it might. It might, maybe. We don't know. Technically, the sun doesn't rise, but we can get past that. What do you mean? Mm. It clearly does. Well, nothing. That's a talk for another time. But I think there's another topic we are missing here, which should be more important. And I am assuming that's the scary man we have to get to as quick as possible? No, that's actually why we have a sort of an elf, very scary Oh, no, 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 don't worry about us. that. No, 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 that's, there's nothing. Nope, mm -mm, nope, nothing to worry about. I'm not uh, sure how that's the nothing. There's certainly not an elf who's bit, uh, my fiance's head made hiding in the shadows. That would be ridiculous. What? Uh, what? Wait, wait, what? She's here? What are we talking about? I forgot. Let's what? move on. Bork? Wait, wait, she came? What? I don't know what. Um. You just said. Said what? I said it wouldn't be her. That'd be ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, why would she follow you? Wait, so Silly. she never went back to my father? Uh... Look at those pretty stars. Well, oh, that makes the letter I sent him very confusing. Why? What was in the letter? Well, remember, I had I promised her that I would send my father a letter stating that I was responsible for all this so that she wouldn't punish in any way but she never came back so um, well so doc how long do you think it'll take us to set up camp well, it depends on how long we stand around and talk about it instead of actually doing it. Right, right, right. I, I only have two tents, so... I have a tent as well, although it is sized for me, so... Well, well that leaves Misty. Oh, I see what's going to happen here. All right. At that, Bork pulls out the two tents, hands one to Misty and one to Demira. I look at the <coughs> tent, like, what am I supposed to do with that? You don't know you how, how to... I'll set it up for you, then. It's not like it's raining. I can sleep under the clear sky. That's what I usually did. Do, do, did done. Um, well, I, I understand that, but... If you can sleep in some comfort, after you all, you do realize that inside it. the tent, and someone attacks me, I have less chances of escaping or noticing that someone attacks me. I can even su suffocate if someone puts it on me, and kind of like just you know things happen. I understand that those are such things you would have had to face on your own. However, we will take turns keeping watch. Doc, I mean, I can keep myself. a watch. First. And the shadows, who are not Demira's handmaid at all. Just I mean, if you're not giving, going, if you're not going to give me a clear answer, if the person who's following us, we know it or not, I'm gonna just find it and kill it because it's a danger. <sighs> She's a friend. Well, friend is a loose term. 
ally, protector, defender. That is quite Don't worry. How are you going to find anything in the dark? I can yes. see in the dark. Not that like you think I, that I can't. Okay. You can't even. All find right, all things. right. I will set up Misty's tent for her and Demira's. Misty, you, you said you wanted first watch. That's fine by me. Is it fine by you, Doc? Certainly, I won't oppose. Well, then, Doc and I will take the crappier shifts, if that's all right with you, Doc. I suppose I'm being volunteered, so as you were. Right, so would you like the second shift or the third shift? I will take um, the third. It would be the time when the sun would rise, and normally that would be the time I do the prayers to my god, so whatever, All right, close then. enough. So then, Misty, you could take the first watch and then sleep through the night. I'll take the second watch, and then dock, and then Demira will bring out the morning, and that is all the shifts covered, Yes. That's and then, um, uh, then the skid is going to take a shift. But there's only four, and he's only a child. But he wants an adventure, so he should learn. I'll take a shift. Mm. I'll do Very it. Well. I'll do it. You could take a shift with me and Fluffy, then. I was wondering the kid could take a shift with me. Hmm. Well, that was surprising. All right, then. Anyone opposed to this idea? <laughs> yes, Randy? I would like to take a shift with Fluffy. But um, I could teach you how to use knives. I would like to that take a shift That is not something you teach a child. I was his age when I learned to throw knives at my enemies. Well, and I was his age when I learned the way of the sword. That's that's a fair so, thing. Mm. And if he's going with us, he needs to learn not to pet animals. But you! It would be good if he knew how to defend himself, at least basically. All right. But if anything happens to poor little Randy, Misty, I won't be happy. And I'll hold you responsible. I expect to see him when I get up for my shift. Yeah, right, as if that scares me. Bork points to the two decimated dogs that he killed in six seconds. It might just a little short. Before you even touch me, I will be gone from your sight. Hmm. Impressive. You know, there's an elf in the woods I think you would get along well with. Huh. Perhaps, you know, she will come out while we they will be playing around with Andy. <coughs> At that, I, uh, write another letter. I turn and start setting up the tent while continuing listening to them and occasionally chiming in over my shoulder. Oh, I got I got some paper here. Here. <laughs> this is my mail. I mean paper. There you go. Are there already words on that paper? Uh, I got a I got a blank sheet here. <laughs> no, um I I um parchment isn't an issue, but I appreciate it. That's very um, generous of you. He does this, and he has this backpack, and you can just see, like, full of, like, ink wells. Most of them are empty. Uh, paper Paperwork that is slightly, slightly crumpled in it. He's like, oh, oh, oh okay. Um, sure. If, uh, if you have, uh, oh, okay. I'll just, uh, go, go be with the scary lady. I'm gonna stay up for a little bit. I have a um, something I have to make. So, all right, your tents are set up. Good night. Good, Good night, Amira. Good night. 
Good night, Misty. <laughs> Good night, Doc. <laughs> Good night, Randy. Uh, good, good night. Good night, random elf in the shadows that we totally don't know. <sighs> and at that, he uh, lies down on the floor uh, and uses his backpack as a pillow and almost immediately falls dead asleep. It sounds good. Uh, any scenes we want in the evening? Uh, move along. is gonna make the try to make the poison for Misty. Okay. Uh, craft and check, please. Okay. Fifteen. Nice. Well, I have a plus eight, so. Okay. Just looking up some rules real quick. So, you want to sit down and uh, you rolled a 15 for your crafting check. What you're going to get right now is the uh, the formula to be able to craft hunter spider uh, poison. Um, mm. It does take a couple days to be able to uh, to craft it. So, it's just like um, uh, we can begin the process. You understand the ingredients for it. But if you really want to sit down and, and create the poison, you kind of need a more controlled setting and a couple days uh, about eight hours to do so so uh, if you're looking to get a long rest or um unfortunately you'll not be able to to get this tonight but you know right. you understand you understand the process okay Demira goes to, to her tent then okay uh Misty, as you're going through this this watch with um this this kid, he's like always just kind of like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, he he shouldn't have time for that because I would take him to a closer towards these like uh, trees here, here, and um, I would give him one of my knives. Um, I would take another myself. And I would try to teach him how to throw a knife that it would get stuck, you know, in, in the tree trunk, you know. Um, and I also would like actually to have a conversation with him, but I'm not sure if we should role play or I just tell you the questions I would ask him. Uh, yeah, we can have a scene. Uh, he's terrible at this, by the way. Um, oh, he has like no upper arm strength. He's also mm. a kid, so, yeah. Yeah. You know. I would say to him, you do have some potential. Of course, so longer training would be required. Oh, hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. So you seek adventures, don't you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I am going to be the, the best bard in the land. You will call me a scald. You will call me Randy. Yeah, sure. Um... How, how are your parents? They're um, you get along. They're, yeah, they're busy. Well, Always well. busy, and you dream of adventures, right? I dream of music. And and yeah, I guess I guess adventures. I mean, we'll 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 go to a uh, school eventually, m maybe. Hmm. You know, I have a very awesome school. I went there myself. Like, the, the tutor himself was pretty bad, but, uh, I mean, I'm planning on getting rid of him, but the gang itself was really cool, actually. And, you know, it's a bit of training for me, and, and, and there were boys and girls. I'm pretty sure we could do something awesome from you, and if you have talent for birds, you know? Uh, so, you know, school is, like, great. How, how much is tuition? <laughs> no tuition. You can go for free. <gasps> oh, I you're not scary at all. You're you're quite friendly. Absolutely. You know, with with the skills we learn, then you can do wonders in this world, you know, and then you have kind of the family who will never betray you. We all stay together afterwards, you know. Oh, is is this your your family? Oh, the, these three guys? No, no, no. I'm talking about different family. I'm planning on finding them after all this nonsense will be over. 
Oh, um, okay. Well, I would love to meet your, your, your family. Oh, that sounds amazing. So perhaps then if you want, you can, you know, convince the big guy that you want to go on a longer adventure with us. Because, you know, after this, we will then go further to find uh, the people I require in my family. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the one with the, uh, the pet? The, the green one? Ah, uh, yeah, the one, the green one. Yeah, indeed. Oh, he is yeah. sad and annoying, but... He's a pushover. What do you mean, a pushover? I mean, just give him a smile, sing a little music. I'm sure I can make it work. Oh, God, you know, I really started liking you. We well. could do wonders together. You have wits, and we need wits, you know, when, when, when you go to our school. Oh. Uh, sounds like an entire school. I have to ask more about that, that later. Yeah, I, free tuition? That sounds amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So talk, like smile, as you said, to the big guy. And uh, we will see what can be done then. And for now, take this knife and learn and learn and learn. Try and try again. Oh, okay. He's going to be like, just try and like chuck it into mm -hmm. trees and, and work on his aim then. Now I will torture him with that for the full kind of my uh, thingy while I have to, you know, my watch. Sure, sure. Uh, cool. Uh, uh, any other... Anything else you guys want to do over watch? Hmm. I don't... Cool. So, the eclipse sun begins to rise as you guys uh, naturally wake up. You're not waking up with the sun, but we kind of get that. You can kind of stretch. Um... It almost feels like a there. There's almost like a weight on your um, on your tattoos. Like it's just kind of like pushing down on you. There's just a slight uh, pressure, as if you are are wearing just a little more clothing than you would expect to. And it kind of settles into you. It almost feels like it, it drags you down. But you know, you stretch a little bit and kind of get rid of that feeling. But um, we are awake the next morning. Excellent, and no one lost limb or life overnight. No, uh, we will take long rest procedures, which means we get what back in that all. Is it uh, your con times your level? Con mod times your level? Times your level? Is it? Uh, the character regains. Your are your character regains hit points equal to their con oh. modifier multiplied by their level? Wow, cool. Uh, you lose one fatigue condition, you are no longer doomed or drained, and you get your spells back for the day. If so what if, our, what if our con modifier is zero? You, uh, min you have back. a minimum of one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no health back. You never, you never heal. You're always yeah. doomed. <laughs> Thank God I'm full on health. But, but I mean, honestly, before we rest each day, Doc could just spend the rest of his cure fonts to uh, heal everybody because he hasn't used any, I don't think. Or he might have used one back in the cave, but either way, I'm full now. If anyone's not full health, they should be full health. I am missing what? Uh, I was at 29 before we healed. I'm now at 35. So if you're going to burn a heal, that would probably put me at max now. Hey, you, can burn a, you could have burned a heal before you rested. That's fine. Before we went to sleep. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Great. So uh, Rand Randy's there. Uh, he's sitting there. He has like this, um, this uh, makeshift uh, belt that's holding this, uh, this dagger on his side. Um, made probably from like a uh, like bits and pieces of, of torn off clothing and some like plant life that he may have found around uh, he's a lot dirtier than um when he went to bed he uh, from from the effort he exuded with uh with misty everyone else would recognize that there's like just more dirt on his face maybe there's a bruise or two um but uh he is ready to go he helps tear down and Okay, uh, so uh, which lake are we going to? Uh, 
Lake Wallumpompack. No, uh, we are headed to the one in the northernmost middle part of the forest, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, sure. Sure. Uh, I I know where it is. Oh, well, mm. then, by all means. Fluffy attempts to beg everyone for food as they're eating their morning oh, rations. God. With Achoo! a uh, charisma of one. Yeah, I throw like glitter, like a glitter spell at it. A little cantrip, like ch -ch -ch, go away. Demira gives him gives it some of her food. I ignore so him. Bork. Bork gives him a little food too. Sounds good. Um, yeah. Uh, we can get get traveling. Uh, if you leave in the morning, you'll probably get there uh, pretty close to dusk, like a, a 4 p.m. equivalent for us. And, um, yeah, tell me what you, uh, if you want to do anything on the way. Uh, Doc is keeping an eye out for any more elves of any sort of persuasion, as well as these supposed druids that we might pass by. Okay, go ahead and give me... Uh, go ahead and perceive for me. And I get an additional two to to see anything that's actively trying to hide from me. So that goes from a 16 to an 18 then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you think you get a glimpse of pink hair. Damn gnomes. <laughs> uh, but no, no druids at this point. Okay. Well, no, uh, yeah, that's all Doc does. He's just being vigilant. Okay. Um, you guys have a pretty good idea where these druids are. Uh, you were kind of given some some direction on it. So do you guys want to actively go to their encampments, or are you going to actively avoid it? I think we're actively avoiding them at the moment. Okay. Uh, then there will be no interactions with them. And you are able to to travel for a good, you know, seven, eight hours and arrive at Luna Lake. Throughout the way, uh, Randy is just kind of like humming to himself uh, pretty absentmindedly. Uh, once in a while, he pulls out this book and, and tries to like uh, open up an ink well to scribble in it while, um, while you guys are walking. Uh, his handwriting's atrocious, but um, he does that. All right, and uh, we we arrive at this rather large lake. This large this lake is uh, pretty pretty long and pretty wide. It goes about um, half a mile out, so you can see the other side of the shore, but it, it's fairly substantial. Um, walk in we can see a small uh beach um being set up and um seems uh seems pretty normal you can see some fish life uh within the within the lake if you look just in the distance you can kind of see the uh the movements of the water indicate that there is fish but nothing terribly of interest No immediate signs of a uh, demigod inhabitants. Mm. Uh, no. I think Bork would try and start looking around for any signs of the missing child. So, uh, at a 14, I am. Uh, surveying the area, trying to look for any tracks or any sign, really, at all of where this missing boy might be. Okay. Um, yeah, so you look out to the, uh, to... Oh, I just had a mind blank. Uh, you look out to the lake, trying to figure out um, if you can see anything, and uh, there is some movement of, of larger creatures within the water, but we're not seeing any uh, any sort of humanoid figure or anything like that. Um, uh, if you look like around the area, see if there's any 
evidence of encampments maybe uh we're not even seeing anything like that most of the things are like weeks old all right um i guess i will uh turn to the others I see no sign of the boy or or anything else for that matter. Well, Um, since how none of you are particularly really religious, perhaps I could think on a way to, um, I don't know, perform some sort of prayer to uh, Luna. Mira's going to cast Detect Magic. (laughs) So, you try to uh, look for magic, um, and you ignore it, ignoring the party. Um, You look towards Randy, and Randy has some magic to him. Really? Yeah. Huh. Not... Uh, not, um, like any items or anything like that. It's just he himself has some, some magical tendency. Maybe he's, uh, uh, innate like you are, uh, innate spellcaster, but, you know. But nothing else here is magical. Everything else seems pretty natural. Um... Perhaps we need to wait. I I saw in my in the crystal ball. As seeing her, and it usually shows the future. Uh, she does approach Randy, and kind of look really close at him. Uh, hi. Hi. Um. Have you ever? Can I can I tell you a secret? Uh. Sure. Oh god, this is where Johnny admits he's a demon. I think the dog is poisonous. I keep <laughs> sneezing around it. Oh, I don't yeah. think we should keep the dog. I think it needs a bath. Can we just throw him in the water? Uh, that's just how it is, unfortunately. A pork is very attached to it. So just keep your distance, and I think it'll be okay. Um, <laughs> but um, I was going to ask you, have you ever shown any magical abilities? What? Uh, Demira will try to show him how, how to cast uh, let's see a bard spell. Um, inspire courage. So she'll hold up her orb and it'll, it will glows. And um, she says an incantation says, here, you try, and she hands the orb to him. Uh... So, do I just, like... Do I just... blow on him? Or do I shake it? Uh, how about you try singing? Or, Uh, Or playing? Uh, oh, okay, um... Uh, okay, um, uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, hi, my name is Randy, and I like some candy, but that isn't important to this tale. I, I traveled all this way to see the four today, and the sunlight shines on them. So here's what I have to say before the marked are on the way, we must continue to tell the story. Because Randy is ready to leave this town already and follow you to your fate. And the, um, the, the, uh, the orb glows a little bit, but it's not a, um, it's not an Inspire Courage spell. Hmm. I did it! (laughs) Yeah, you, you certainly did something, yes. Uh... Could she try to recognize spell? N- not not a spell. It it is more of the orb is reacting to to him. Like he can 
he can potentially use it as a focus, but he cannot do this. Hmm. Well, Randy, it... Um, she'll take the orb back. Now I want some you, candy. You definitely... <laughs> you definitely have some magical abilities in you. I'm sure if you practice, maybe study different kinds of spells... Oh yeah, I'm see. going to school. I don't know if you heard. What? Uh, you're... Uh, that's good? Yeah. You're going to a school? Yeah, like bard like college. A, um, like a bard school? Or... Oh. Oh yeah, it's tuition free. Really? Yeah. Huh. None of, none of the colleges I visited were... What's the name of the college? Oh, I, I don't know. I'll have to ask, ask Misty. But, uh... Yeah, let me know too. But, uh, oh yeah, go there. Learn, learn new things. I get a family, another family. I never had two families. I've only had one. Oh. It's like double the support, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we have to figure out what's going on. On with the lake right now. Demira kind of gives Misty this long look. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stay away from the uh, the the dog then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and goes like, oh, my name is Randy, and I want some candy. I'll oh, use this. Uh, but uh, he he will keep himself distracted. Uh, can I, would I know of any sort of religious significance to the location in such that, I don't know, there's like ritual to be done that talks to Luna or something uh, that would attract the attention of one of her followers? Yeah, Luna is kind of tied, tied to water. Um, if you want, if you think of like the the ocean uh, waning and and waxing, but lakes themselves don't necessarily uh, don't necessarily have a specific religious sort, and you know people can make religious symbology out of anything if if they really wanted to to sort of ease the mind. So we can go and and set up an altar in a bedroom and we can call it religious, right? Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean it's exceptionally more religious than anything else in the world, but, you know, it, this this seems to be more of a situation of that. That this lake was simply named after uh, after the god, not necessarily because the god had anything to do with it. Gotcha. In that case, Doc would just kind of be puzzling out a way to um, invoke forth whatever spirit might be in this lake. Okay. Um we'll take we'll take a religion check. Yeah, it you're not you're not terribly sure what you can do. Um but I think I think you also see the same movement that Bork saw earlier. There is like a large fish or something within the lake itself. Anybody good at fishing? We could have quite the dinner tonight. Actually, you know what? Doc's good at fishing. <laughs> he'll take out his like half size fishing pole and he'll go try and catch that fish. <laughs> that moment you look in your inventory. <laughs> uh. That's funny. The smallest, smallest creature with the smallest fishing pole. <laughs> um, what do you use for bait? Uh, I will forage for bait nearby. Okay. Uh, you can find some bugs or something. It's no big Perfect. deal. Yeah, it'll do. Um, I have a goblin dog full of bugs. I can keep those. I don't want to retrieve them. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you kind of, kind of set yourself out and, um, uh, raise the fishing pole and jet it, jet it out, and um, yeah, and we're sitting here kind of waiting for for a good, uh, good moment or two. Um, anyone else want to do anything while we're here? 
once Borg fails to find any evidence of the child, um, he's going to attempt to convince the dog to let him uh, give it a bath with a six. So um, the goblin dog, in response to his attempts to give him a bath, scratches himself. Um, so he does the goblin box thing. Yeah, gotta make a does, does, does this fortitude. Um, and kind of growls a little bit at at uh, at Bork, who yeah, good. ends up giving up and just uh, yeah, watching everyone else, see what everyone else is doing uh, before he finally has an aha moment. Aha. They said that this ditty likes to dance on the water. Yes? Yes. Who, 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 what? They did? Who's they? Who said this? I did when I told you all about my vision in the orb. Oh, there was dancing involved. I must have forgotten that part. Well, um, Randy, do you have any instruments? I... No, can't, could never afford it. Uh, we'll have to fix that for you. But for now, let's see. What, what? And Bork is going to just try and like uh, look around to see if he can uh, make get like a makeshift drum. You know, so he's like looking for any kind of like hollow logs or anything like that that he could have the boy drum on. Well, one second. Uh, so, Randy, <laughs> like, sees sees you begin to do the, it's like, oh, uh, uh, we we are. You do you like? We can do a beat. Need a need yeah. a beat. Yeah, yeah, let's let's give that a try. I'll I'll try and make a little beat, and uh. Oh, let me grab some make sticks. Make a song. Let me grab some sticks. Okay. And he, mm -hmm. he runs into the forest and comes back with these sticks and just starts hitting hitting rocks and stuff. And uh, to, to add to that, uh, Bork is going to freestyle beatbox with a, with a nine. <laughs> so it's, it's, like, it's like this really sad, like everything you would imagine when a white man tries to be cool and beatbox. Boots. You know, and who who doesn't know how to. And boots and cats. And <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Demira will slowly, awkwardly, like inch over to the group, and start singing very, very quietly. <laughs> boots but it's and barely cats audible. And boots and cats and boots. Boots, 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 boots. It's very, very quiet, but it sounds very nice. <laughs> We might have actually a dead kid lying somewhere around, and you guys are singing. <laughs> Very well done. Um, I looked for the child, didn't see it. So now we're trying to make music for the Dizzy to come out and dance. Okay. It's all oh, that this is the most idiotic thing ever. Maybe uh, we need to wait for nighttime. <laughs> okay, so I would say that Doc begins to lay lay out his line and. Uh, something catches. I think I'm going to put you on the, uh, just slightly up on the map. That makes a little more sense. Maybe up. Probably be like up here. Well, honestly, probably be more like out here. But yeah, like maybe on that rock. Um, yeah. uh, pull something there, and uh, you catch something. You mean athletic check? Oh boy, I'm really good at that. Oh wow, I'm really hovering around this twelve. Okay. So um something uh takes a bite of the bait and uh pulls the fishing pool from you 
ever so slightly and you have to like rush to uh, like keep track of it and you're able to hold on but you're not able to um do much about it but the thing you see uh that bites his bait is just his head kind of bobs above the water uh, it seems to be this green scaled almost humanoid looking fish oh that's horrifying and it is currently fighting against you to uh, so at this point, um, it, it does have fingers, so he's going to pull the, the actual hook out of it, and he's trying to pull you into the water. I release my fishing pole as a free action. Okay, yeah, so he takes the fishing pole. And Doc's like, hey, what the heck, guy? And he disappears into the water. He looks back to the group and is like, some fish person just stole my fishing rod. Um, he could have stole your arms. I mean, he could have stole many things, but he stole my fishing rod. I hate it when that happens. So, That's happened to you before? Well, let's not get into that. <laughs> uh, I think, um... Uh, from, like, a folklore perspective, uh, Doc will recognize this as a, uh, like almost like a sea monster. Sometimes they're called sea devils uh, in, in folklore, um, but I will take a history check from anybody who, who wants to to see if they can find out some more. There, There is no such thing as history anymore. Yeah. <sighs> you mean society? Uh, I, I have bardic lore. Yeah, let's oh, do yeah, bar, bar, bardic lore or folklore or something to that extent. We have it. Demir is studied. Uh, is it just her? Okay. Yeah, I don't got nothing. Uh, Twenty-two. Nothing that would be applicable. Cool. Unless nice. survival counts. Yeah. So. What does Arcana? Arcana is specifically for magic. Oh. Okay. Nice. Uh, Demir, you you saw like a brief glimpse of, of this kind of like bluish gray scaled creature. Uh, seems to have like a like a red mane on on its uh, on its head, and you look at it, you're trying to pause, and um, these are uh, are creatures that are commonly known as a sea devil, but more accurately, they are people who have become established to the water, um, as in they have been forced to kind of adapt, um, and they adapt most of the time by water breathing spells and and uh, like. Uh, transformations into these uh these fish-like creatures um to and it that slowly begins to turn them into what these are so if you take a um a wizard cast uh, water breathing on a target and he does it every day for a year he begins to take the traits of what is commonly known as a sea devil um not not he is not innately magical but uh, it has been solely affected by the magic to sort of change their... And we can think, think of it as DNA, but Demir will probably have a more fantasy-esque term for to think of it as. Um, uh, we can think of it probably as mutants. They are mutated to, uh, to fit this role. Would Demir know if they, like, retain their, their language? Um, quite possibly. Uh, these creatures tend to be on the shore, though. They do not it's, uh, usually happen in the lakes. Um, mm. uh, so they should regain some of their humanity. They should regain uh, like recognition of faces they recognize, but they do not necessarily can associate a human as a sentient creature or anything like that. Um, so... You know, if it was like your your long lost brother, maybe your brother can recognize you, but it probably won't recognize the person next to you. Oh, I know what that is. Well, uh, do tell. Oh, um, it's a sea devil. Uh, well, that's the kind of crude name for them. They're um. So when. The magical effects of water breathing, uh, 
that if you constantly cast it on somebody for a long period of time, like a year, and they're exposed to the water, they begin to mutate into this sort of uh, creature of the water, so that they used to be a person, um, but they'd only be able to recognize somebody that they knew before this transformation. Otherwise, it'll be pretty hard to communicate with them, I think. So wait, that might be the boy. Oh, it 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 could be. It seems like an accursed fate. It would take some time. Uh, did we know how long this boy was missing? Yes. Couldn't have been a year, not if they were calling the god from a local town to help. No. Unless, not that unless long. Unless there was. Unless there was something else to speed up the process, it's very unlikely. Like a demi-goddess of water? Yeah. Assuming but such a thing a... resides here. She isn't really a demi-goddess of the water. She's the moon maiden. But... I don't think there's a difference. Well, did you want to come and dance for it? And maybe it will bring her forward, perhaps? I think that's a good idea. Tamara, you should dance for it. Uh, um... To be fair, Bork and Demir probably know formal dances. Uh, uh, like, alone? I don't, like, she was dancing well? in the water, and I don't think I could do that. Alright then. Tamira tries to step onto the water, curiously. <laughs> um... Like, uh... Do you take off your shoes or your boots, or are you going full... Full, uh... Full leather... Oh, yeah. Stock, she'll, I don't know. She'll, ta- she'll take <laughs> off her shoes and, like, hitch up her skirt and tie it off and try to step out over the water. Yeah. You begin to take a, take a step... Uh, and you take another step as the, the water um, is cool on your feet and uh, you... How long does the tech magic last for? Uh, it's as long as she holds the spell. It's, it's a cantrip, so as long as she wants to, pretty much. You holding the, the spell? Yeah, she... yeah, she'll keep it up while she's looking around. Sure. Take another step, and another step, and... Suddenly, um... It feels like you can see magic pulsating around your feet. Uh, it seems to be reacting to your step, uh, your presence in the water. She'll start trying to dance out to the center, I guess. Yeah, the, the lake, the lake, um, like the the center is quite a far ways away, and uh, it'll probably go too, direction. too too deep for you. But you begin to move out, and um, we can see two things begin to happen. Uh, one, uh, first and foremost, um, everyone else can see these sea creatures beginning to um maneuver around uh, the area and secondly uh, we begin to uh, uh, and secondly we see a ripple within the water as if someone tossed a rock and it begins to extend outward uh, but without any clear cause of what could have caused this weight into the water um how does uh how does Demira move, maneuver? Uh, she'll try to mimic the the dance she saw in her orb. Okay. In the crystal ball. Um, so I my head can view that very similar to to ballet. Uh, she it was a lot of turning, uh, a lot of being on the tips of your toes, and um. We will see the ripples uh, increase, but we also see that is attracting some of these sea devil creatures. Um, 
how does the party want to react? I think Quark is going to watch with a big, dumb, goofy grin on his face while she dances. And then he's eventually going to try and, and join in awkwardly as well. So he's just kind of like, at first, he's just swaying back and forth. And then he starts, you know, doing like maybe a, a bit of uh, a ballet work with her. So while she's got that 14th performance going on, uh, he's going <laughs> to attempt to dance with her with a four. So it's like this really, really heavy, awkward, like just goofy as he's just attempting to, to, to dance like she's dancing with a big goofy smile on his face. At the shore or is he going to... No, yeah, he's still at the shore. He's, he's uh. right at the edge of the shore. Like right there. Uh, so, is is Doc still on that rock? Yes, unless the things are getting closer to him. Uh, the things are getting closer to Mira. He's not particularly worried about his position. They do. He puts them closer to them, but are they moving with like a a perp? Like, are they stalking? Demira like a cat would stalk a bird, I guess. Uh, sense motive is what perception now. What perce yeah. what perceive for me. I mean, they're definitely moving towards Demira. Their intentions are still kind of, uh, you know, their intentions are almost animalistic, so it's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, Doc's gonna stay there. He's just going to, I guess, quietly prepare to cast a spell if he, okay. if he needs to. So, what happens at this point is we see one of these creatures begin to to stalk up towards the mirror, and Demir is getting is is in the stance, and uh, he finally catches out the center of her eye that one of them is maybe uh, thirty feet from her. And uh, from behind, we look out towards the forest, or the camera pans out towards the forest, and this single arrow begins to fly high and land right into this creature, just 30 feet away from, from Demir's there. And we can see this creature begin to bleed out. Roll for initiative. <laughs> Doc is ready to act uh, today. I believe it. Plus two to mine. Got it. Doc, you have seen this arrow come up. You see it arc. You see it land in the creature's flesh. And you see them. their personalities kind of shift as they get a little angrier. Uh, you are first act. A little far away for that magic weapon, aren't you? Only... It's nothing that all three of my move actions couldn't fix. Dang it. <laughs> Don't Next worry. Uh, it's not the first thing on Doc's mind today. He doesn't necessarily want to fight, but uh, the choice has probably been made for him. So we're going to spend one action to move away. We'll spend another action to move next to Misty. And, um, let's see. I don't have any one-action spells, do I? I, t I do. I have message. Oh, boy. I don't think message is going to be particularly helpful. I will use my last action to... Um, draw my hand crossbow. Nice. And that'll do it for me. I think uh, Bork, at the very least, can can see movements coming from uh, coming from behind him. He can see this uh, this flash of pink um, moving forward as we see another arrow beginning to to fly as um, Kashara enters the scene. 
Take another shot. Nice. I'm 20. Mm. She's so awesome. But only Easy. four points of damage. Still, though. Not 20. 14? Oh, so. I thought it's 14. Yeah, uh, 20 will miss. 20 misses. 20 what? misses. Oh, now I'm stressing. Sick hide. Now I'm stressing a little. Uh, Fluffy, you're up. So this arrow's gonna come out. Right. Uh, it's going to run there, and you can see her her accuracy is impeccable, but the uh, the armor of the creature just doesn't pierce that. It just gives a little nick, seemingly unaffected. <coughs> All right, let me check the movement real quick of the goblin dog. Forty feet, so he can move two more this round. So, so there. Uh, and then his second movement action, he's going to run over to Misty. Um, Demira? Demira? And, uh, Demira. Or Demira, rather. Sorry, Demira. Yeah. And uh, once he's over at Demira, he's just going to wag his tail next to her and just kind of yip at them and ready his final action to bite anyone that comes next to Demira. So he... He's acting like a guard dog, but really, he's more in a playful mood. Still, though, he's there, ready hey. to attack. Give me a roll fortitude save, please. Oh, boy. 21. Nice. So, uh, you feel like you're about to sneeze, uh, and uh, you are able to resist that temptation. <laughs> okay, cool. Demir, you are up. Alright, uh, Demira stops dancing and looks around kind of shocked, and then she sees Kashara, and she sort of sighs and looks back at the creatures. Um, They haven't acted yet, and no one's fought them yet, so technically you could try Diplomacy. And if it fails, just hold your action for their turn. I mean, arrows, attack, you arrows, arrows were drawn and shot. How uh, about she just goes out of the water? That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah, just leave the dog in there. Yeah, leave the dog in, guy. Um, Demira sort of holds up her hands and looks at uh the closest one but you know if they can understand her all right they understand the language they knew in life right uh they probably understand to a degree they will pick out words uh your your best bet is probably more tone of voice than than actual um actual communication she She looks at the creature and says, I'm very sorry about the arrows. There's no need for us to fight. I can heal that one as long as you're not going to hurt us. You can go ahead and make a, um, what is it, diplomacy in this game? Uh, against their will. Okay. Nice. The one that you were talking to that, that hasn't been hit yet kind of settles down and understands that tone of voice you have. Uh, the one that was hit seems pretty angry still, but, uh. At least one of them is stagnant at the moment. Um, we'll call this one action to do this. She's going to look at the other one and... Twist her into this. Okay, yeah, she doesn't have to go up to it. She, um, cradling the crystal ball in one hand, she reaches out towards uh, the wounded creature and starts uh, chanting and her hand glows with this light and then it 
uh, sort of drifts over towards the creature as she casts Soothe. What does Soothe do? Grace Massive, five healing. And she just repeats, We don't need to fight. Kashara, stand down. So let's see, it says you're great you grace the target's mind, boosting its mental defenses and healing its wounds. The yeah. target regains one D ten plus four hit points. Okay, okay, so my I I guess my my question is it does say one willing creature. Um and like, I'm not crazy to think that anyone would be willing to get healing, right? Is that... No, they... they I mean, theoretically, they'd be willing on, as long as they're not superstitious or something. Like, if, they, if they're going, uh-oh, what is she doing? Then maybe it will save to... Because, yeah, cinematically, all, all you're doing is kind of speaking words of comfort. Um, and, and then glowing white healing energy is coming from her hand, she said, so I mean... Are yeah. They particularly good at identifying magic. I don't know if enough was given away for them to even identify it was magic. Well, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, they are not. Uh, so this one will uh, kind of relax as well, um, at least for the brief moment. Nice. That was a good. Uh, good combat this, session. This this is a a, a short combat. <laughs> Uh, you guys called it, just not in the way I was thinking of. <laughs> I mean, you know, we could always... Bork doesn't know much. All he knows is there's threat. So if you want, I could just have him charge in and attack. Mm -hmm. anyway. I mean, Demira did speak out loud and... <laughs> oh, yeah, she did. Charge. But if she someone does doesn't care now. what Demira said... Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> me. <laughs> so... I, I still have an action. Sure, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh... Um, is that all three actions for you? Yep. All right, cool. This uh, this creature here is going to uh, be able to swim pretty dang fast up to this square here as its first action, and is going to uh, continue to move. It's going to go up to Demira and just like sniff your armpit. As its action. Okay. <laughs> uh, still holding. Uh, it does have a trident, so still holding the trident, but it's not actively uh, poking you or anything like that with the the pointy end. Um. Mm, we we will leave the other two there for now. I think they're going to ready an action if. Uh, if they get attacked, if that's if they get attacked, they will throw throw a trident at something. I think with it approaching Demira as a free action, um, Fluffy goes from wagging his tail to. <laughs> it's a horrible goblin dog noises. Fluffy, it's fine. <laughs> He's, he's he's just sniffing me. Uh, Misty. Okay, so when I see that this creature is approaching the mirror, you know, of course I see that it's sniffing her. Well, whatever. Um, yeah, I I have like standing up from that branch. Is that an action? I don't think we have to worry about that. You're not prone or anything, so. Ian, no action to stand up. Okay, so I want to move a bit here. Not deep, you know, into the water. If I, if I understand correctly, it's still, like, very... Yeah, it, 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 not deep. it's pretty shallow up until maybe this area up here. Okay, so I, I move while I'm moving. Like, while I'm moving at the same time, I want to shout... Demira, get the fuck out of the water. 
and I take my hand uh, bow, hand crossbow, and I shoot at this creature. They aren't fighting us. Not, they are now. Go ahead and roll. remember what I'm, I'm supposed to roll. Where do I need to click? Hand crossbow on that thing? Yeah, yeah, on the left side of the character sheet. There's, um, yeah, you got it. Uh... That's a 16. 16 will miss. Would you like to take your second shot at him? Mm-hmm. Be at a minus 5. Mm-hmm. <coughs> what is this 1d6 plus 0? I can't remind. Do I again click hand crossbow? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 15 minus 5, so that'd be a 10. Yeah, there we go. Are you trained with a hand crossbow? Are you real? <laughs> what do you mean by that? I don't Look, get it. That's a very low bonus to attack. We'll have to take a look at that at some point. I Maybe that, I missed that something? That doesn't look right to me. We'll, we'll my... look at we'll, we'll look at it later. No, your roll, mm. the thing you rolled was correct, but your bonuses don't look correct. We'll look at it after the session. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. Tamira wrote, uh, she will turn towards Missy, clearly preparing to defend the creatures. I like it. Uh, let's let's say the reason why these attacks don't hit is from Demir's actions. What will Demir do? If that's okay with you. Uh, Demira will move in front of the uh, the creature defensively and just all she could really do I guess is hold up her crystal ball to block the arrows yeah we'll do that we'll say you can move this five foot square as a reaction that's cool okay and get away from fluffy too My allergies are acting up, but clearly Fluffy has, has yeah, problems. Same. At Bork. Alright, so Bork is going to move. Uh, looks like he's going to have to make two movements. But he is, so he takes two movements to get next to Tamir while pulling his weapon from his side. And then um, once he's there, uh, he's going to ready an attack should Misty's action cause us to go back into combat. So the moment the creature goes to make any hostile movements, Bork's going to kill him. So just real quick, mechanically speaking, it takes two actions to ready an action. Just so, just so everyone knows. Oh, does it? Really? Oh, it's just one. It does. Mm-mm. It takes. Okay. I thought it. I thought it took your action and reaction. It does take your reaction. It takes two actions to ready an action, and then your reaction to respond to the trigger. Okay. Cool. Well, we can we can do it like this for now, and the next turn we will uh, make sure. Uh, cool. <clears throat> so I mean, seeing this uh, situation sort of change, n- Doc isn't necessarily worried about these things, although when Demira turns around to address Misty, Doc's like, what are you doing? Don't put your back to it. And uh, grasping his holy symbol, he will cast Forbidding Ward. Uh, you ward an ally against the attacks and hostile spells from the target enemy. Target ally against plus one st- um, against the targets. So, specifically so, targeting the enemy. I see, I see. Demira is the target against the enemy that's directly adjacent to her. And uh, for a brief moment, like there's like a little shell of golden light that illuminates into existence. But it's got a sigil of the sun on it before it fades into magical etherealness. Great. Uh, so you begin to use divine magic. Um, your hellmarked, uh, 
just it, it i don't want to say it causes you pain but it causes you irritation just for a brief moment as you do that yeah uh 30 feet away um so bright light comes in there and there's now the forbidding ward uh you have one more action um doc will um He'll pass. He'll pass that action. Okay. I, I'm gonna have Kashara perceive and see if she can figure out what's going on. Uh, we'll, we'll make the um the DC 18, and then we'll see what happens. That's a fair point. Uh, we'll lower the DC. We'll go, um, 16? We'll do 16. Ah, 18 was good. Uh, Kashara ready is an action to fire. Fluffy. Uh... Fluffy... Spends one action to move over and sniff the creature. And then uses an action to hold an action to attack should it become aggressive. Sure. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read this ability real quick. Blood Frenzy. The Sea Devil is not fatigued or ready in a frenzy. The Sea Devil flies into a frenzy in the last one minute. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Gain 7 temp HP. Trigger. That's what you're looking for. Trigger. The devil deals bleed damage to a living creature. Great. Uh, Demir, you are up. My apologies. Uh, Demir looks at Misty and holds up a hand and says, um, Misty, stop attacking them. Are you going to stop attacking them? Can uh, I answer, or do I need to wait for my uh, action? You're eating on mic, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. Um, let's say that line again, Demira, and then we'll we'll I'll let you respond right after. Right. Demira raises a hand towards Misty, and says, "Misty, stop attacking them. Are you going to stop attacking them?" And what are we going to do? Talk to those mindless creatures? They aren't fighting us. We can just let them go about their business. Well, why are they not going out then? Away? Well, we'll end the six seconds there. Uh... uh. Hmm. Demira prepares. Can she prepare? Use her three actions to prepare to cast a two-action cantrip. Let me look it up. Read actions. Pathfinder to E. I linked it in the Discord. Ah, uh, just. You can prepare an action. Prepare. You can prepare to use an action that will occur outside your tomb. Choose a single action or free action. Doesn't need trigger. So it is a single action. You can delay. There... You can delay your turn. I'll let you delay. She um, holds up a hand and it begins glowing slightly, but she's going to delay her turn to see what Misty does. Okay. Uh, and it's pointed towards Misty. Okay. Um, I think all the sea devils are going to run up to, to Fluffy and just kind of like uh, try to figure out what it is, try to look at it, and then... Mm. It's a 
Uh, pr productive fight, guys. <laughs> Misty. So, Misty will <coughs> just say... All this is simply bullshit and a waste of time. And she would kind of almost like spit, and, you know, onto the ground and turn around and she she goes away. Okay. Orc, are you going to attack? Uh, they're not making any hostile moves at this point and Fluffy seems to be loving them to death. He's over there just jumping around and going... <laughs> and sniffing at them, and he seems to be happy, so... At this point, I think Bork would... would I don't think he'd stow his weapon, but he would definitely lower it down to his side and just kind of look back and forth between Demira and Misty and uh, over to the creatures and... He would just he would just step down. He'd stand down, yeah. He's just kinda like taking it all in, just like, oh no, what's gonna happen here? Demira Thanks. slowly lowers her arm and it stops glowing and she's visibly trembling as she turns away towards the other creatures. Okay. Um Doc is gonna sustain that that forbidding ward for its duration. The full minute. Yeah. yeah. Uh, does that require concentration or curiosity? It requires one action to sustain. Cool. So he's Great. constantly sitting there focusing on it. Okay. Let's uh let's perceive, please. That's an eighteen uh, for me. Everyone or am I too far? Um I think I think everyone can perceive. Nice. Not not far enough. What? 25 is not... Oh, never mind. Yeah, like, <laughs> you see an elf. Uh, yeah. Bork, <laughs> perceive, please. Oftentimes, he never perceives the world around him, and this continues with a six. <laughs> In complete contrast to Misty's 25, Bork is once more, as always, completely oblivious. Great. So, Doc, Misty, uh, as... As you got, as we'll say, as Misty begins to turn around, uh, she sees something in the sky, and we can see it bolt real quickly. Has a has a wingspan, probably a bird of some sort, but it does seem to be a little larger than what, what you would expect. And as it goes there, uh, it's hard to put out its minute details, but it seems to have be a black bird with like white uh, white tips on its feathers, as it jets down it flies directly to the center of the lake and doc and misty are well aware of this bird creature beginning to shape shift into this humanoid form this uh, this gray skinned woman with with long white hair with this sword um sword in it her right hand uh, standing there looking towards the coastline and we will fade to black here